Hey up guys, but he's back again. <clears throat> right, so man just recently made a nice cheese and broccoli quiche. Well today, I'm trying to line it up a bit. I am making a quiche, but it's gonna be a crustless quiche. So no pastry involved at all, lightens the calories up, etc, etc. So today it was gonna be a sausage tomato quiche. So I'll show the uh, the ingredients and we'll crack on. Okay, so obviously we've got four sausages there, which I'm just gonna cut up with some scissors and fry off. Oh, actually I've forgotten an ingredient. Ah, typical. An onion. So one onion, some vine tomatoes, you could use any tomatoes you want, some cheese, which I'm gonna grate up, salt and pepper, eight eggs, and I'm going to have some coleslaw with it, so there's a bit of uh, white and red cabbage that we've got that need using up and a carrot and some mayo to make the mayonnaise. So right, we'll get cracking. Right, so put some olive oil into my pan which is warmed up and I've chopped up the onions in the go. This is the first stage. So we don't want to fry these too hard and just until they're softened up and they're uh, translucent. It should take about five or six minutes I reckon. Just keep moving around, make sure they're all coated in the uh, olive oil. It's on about, yeah, it's on a pretty low heat that, so I'll come back when it's uh, a bit closer to being done. Right, so these have had about five minutes now. It's starting to colour up, it's softened up. So I'll be putting them into this bowl. So we'll put back in the quiche later. I've got the uh, oven on at uh, 170. I think again that's about a gas mat 5, 6, I'm not quite sure. So that's that. So I'm now going to just simply snip up these sausages with some scissors and fry these off as well. Cut them into chunks while that big. Get them in, get them fried. This is four sausages just from uh, Liddles, I think we got these from. Yeah, it was Liddles we did our shop on. There we go. Turn the heat up a little bit and just see these off basically. They don't have to be cooked right through because obviously they're going to be cooked again in the quiche. <coughs> but I'll come back after two or three minutes and we'll uh, go from there. All right, guys. So these have had a couple of minutes, two or three minutes, browning off. So they're about ready now. You could have taken the skins off and broken it and break it up into little pieces if that's what you prefer. I just like doing it this way. So basically that's the last bit of the cooking sort of like done for stove top. So those can go into there. All nicely done. And while those were doing, I finally sliced some white cabbage, red cabbage, and some carrot, salt and pepper, and a dollop of mayonnaise. Mixed it all together, and there's the coleslaw. You could use yogurt with that, and I've done that before. In fact, I, I should have done really. I never even thought um, it would have made it even healthier, uh, lighter on calories as well. 
but I do like it with mayonnaise and I like it with salad cream I like it with yogurt as well a bit of salt and pepper beautiful so um, next step is to do the egg mixture and the cheese right so I've put the eight eggs salt and pepper and as much cheese as you want to go in there grated in and you just mix that together basically like you're making scrambled egg mixture or whatever you just break these up I need to add some milk actually, one second. I'm gonna add, you can add cream if you want to make it a bit more indulgent, but I'm just gonna put in a splash of milk, probably about half a cup, half a cup of milk, just to <coughs> thin it out a little bit. basically it, that's the quiche, quiche mixture done. So, get our bowl, that needs drying. What I'm going to do, I'm going to lightly, lightly smear this with butter just to be on the safe side. So, Let's get you I don't want it to stick Up the sides there I have washed my hands by the way Right So work that all the way up to the top Just so it doesn't stick Sometimes it does so there we go, that is that done, so now it's in with the mixture, actually before I do that I'm just going to chop up my tomatoes, one second. Okay so now I'm going to put the mixture in first. into our dish. Lovely. Now we'll sprinkle our onions in from earlier. There's plenty of onions there. two in total I decided to put another one in because uh, the other one was a bit small. Right. Sausage is next. Just dab those in. The oven is now up to temp. It's at 180. I think that's about a gas mat. Sorry did I say 180 or 170? 180. It's about a gas mac five or something around somewhere around there as far as I know. Just keep dabbling these in into the egg mixture. Bum -ba -dum. What a lovely job. That's that. And now for our tomatoes. So again, just plop them in as many or as little as you feel as you want. I like quite a few, to be honest. I love tomatoes. Man's not so keen. I can eat them raw as well, I love them raw. 
So when you used to grow your own and you get them fresh out the greenhouse. Can't beat it man. Honestly, beautiful. I'm just going to keep putting these in. I may as well use them because I've chopped them up. This might like quite a lot of tomato and it probably is, but... And to finish it off, I'm going to put more cheese on. I like dusting. Just ordinary cheddar over the top. And of course, with the added bonus, this isn't as calorific. I used to do this all the time when I was on the keto diet. Lost quite a bit of weight. And uh, I don't know why it stopped it really. I think I was just getting fed up with the same food. Um, Cause you can, there is keto breads that you can do and stuff. I just got a little bit, I just got a little bit bored. But as soon as you start eating carbs again, boof, the weight comes back up. Always the same. Right, I reckon that's about enough. So this is beautiful little beauty is going to go in the oven now. 20 to 25 minutes. I'm going to check it after 20. See what it's like. So we'll come back then guys. Right guys, I had to put it back in after 20 minutes because it wasn't quite done. So it's out now. Obviously it's hotter than the, the face of the sun at the minute. So um, I'm just going to leave that and we're going to have that tonight with... A little bit of salad and some coleslaw so that's that bit done and um, so when I finish tonight we'll uh, we'll get it sorted right back from work I'm gonna portion this up give it a cut Lovely. Right, what am I going to need for this? Um, and what's going to be best to get this out? Probably one of these. Give it a second, guys, and I'll get it out and put it on the plate. Look at that. Beauty. Right, guys. It's triple T time. Taste testing time. <laughs> Here we go. Let's try this quiche. Big bit of sauce on. Hmm. Do you know what it is? When you don't have a pastry, when you get used to it, you, you don't miss it at all. Hmm. That's really nice. It's that nice? I've got two bits of it. <laughs> Sausages are nicely cooked. Tomatoes are cooked perfectly on the top. You can taste the seasoning in the egg. I'm just trying to get a bit. Of... It's crumbling up. <laughs> it won't stay on me fork. Hmm. Not as really nice. I'm going to try some of this we'll coleslaw. We homemade, homemade coleslaw. Yeah, we love home, that, don't we? Homemade coleslaw. Very easy to make. I quite like it with salad cream as well sometimes. Yeah. And yoghurt. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, the crunch. Mm. It beats any sort of, I mean, you can get some nice coleslaws from the shop. But they always seem too much mayonnaise. Creamy, yeah. Not enough veg. But that way, same thing, you can put in what you want. Mm -hmm. When I was on the strict keto, it was yogurt. I made it and you, you don't really miss it once you get used to it. Mm -hmm. Put plenty of um, seasoning in there. And it's lovely. Really nice. So, once again... 
Thank you very much for watching, subscribing, liking and commenting. And uh, we will see you on the next one, which will be very soon. So see you soon, guys. Bye for now.